It should come as no surprise that as games have grown in cultural influence, they've also attracted a growing number of cultural and social critics. And as critics are wont to do, they, well, okay, we, bring up issues with the game's handling of women, of race relations, of the portrayal of LBGTQ characters and topics, of classism, and of culture at large. And the responses from traditional quote-unquote gamers, which is a word I hate to use, but that's another episode, they're always the same. Keep your politics out of my games. Or, oh boy, another reviewer with an agenda. And you see this a lot with the gamer community. They'll bumrush Ebert or any other respected figure and insist they take games seriously as art. But as soon as anyone does try to take a game's claims of artistic intent seriously by looking at the game's content and meaning, then suddenly the line becomes, oh, they're just games. Stop being so serious. They're just for fun. Gamers want playing a video game to be a respected way to spend their time. They want to appear cultured for having completed highly praised titles. They want everyone else who ignores games to see how amazing and enrapturing and evocative a game can be. And there is a naive optimism in that I can respect. I mean, I certainly see beauty and expressive potential in systems, and if I didn't, I wouldn't do this show. But the naive optimism is overshadowed by the tantrums thrown when gamers see the reality of games being taken seriously. They want to proclaim their hobby to be art with no strings attached. They want their games to be adulated without also being criticized. They want their games to be hard to play, but not challenging to consume. They want their games to have tremendous power, but without any responsibility. And really, this mentality is an extension of the games-as-boxed-product worldview that's been adopted by well, pretty much everyone when it comes to AAA titles. It's what makes people outraged when a game like Grand Theft Auto V is given a 9 instead of a 10, because it does everything right. It's also what makes people ask for so-called objective reviews that only look at feature sets or technical competence. It's a consumer goods perspective that suggests game writers should cover games the same way one would discuss toothpaste or socks. And game publishers are as complicit in promoting this view as much as anyone. Between the yearly releases, the focus on features they can put on the back of the box, and the slick commercials aimed at a specific demographic, it often feels like games are marketed more like cars than works of pop culture. Introducing three lead characters transforms both the narrative into one interwoven story and the structure of individual missions. The innovative twin-clutch gearbox S-Tronic. It brings together the benefits of manual gear shifts and automatic transmission. The use of three lead characters also allow for a touch of voyeurism. There's an available Fender Premium audio system that offers high clarity sound at high volumes. And from that warped worldview, the idea of keeping politics out of video games almost makes sense. No one test drives a sedan and then goes home and writes about the car's troubling presentation of minorities or its oppressive heteronormativity. But that's the core problem with the keep your politics out of my video games argument. It presupposes video games are apolitical to begin with. Like they're these wholesome, pure things that exist free from the taint of ideology or bias or viewpoint. Like they're mathematical expressions or cartographical mappings of the world, and anyone dissecting them in a political or social or cultural context is just bringing their own baggage to the conversation. But that's just absurd on its face, especially as many of the games that generate some of the harshest criticisms bring their own politics to the table. Bioshock Infinite uses racially charged imagery as a replacement for actually giving Comstock a reason to be an antagonist for the first half of the game. I must take any task with more than the slightest complexity, or they simply leave it in ruins for me to clean up later. Oh, uh, hello, sir. Don't you pay me no never mind. Just some foolishness, you know. <laughs> Just monkey shines. Can race relations really be an off-topic taboo for dissecting or discussing the game when the game itself keeps bringing it up? Grand Theft Auto V comments on sex and politics more or less constantly. In fact, it's kind of the core of the game's supposed satire. It's the Holden Caulfield of video games, running around pointing out how everyone is a phony. What's going on here? These protesters want to stop us from fracking. You conservatives! Always trying to stop loving people from fracking! In essence, it argues for a sort of South Park centrism, where everyone with strong opinions is wrong because people with strong opinions are easy to turn into lazy parody. The game skewers everyone in a lazy effort to be above the fray, but in the process it ends up punching down at vulnerable groups of people more often than it ends up punching up at existing power structures. It's kind of hard to keep politics out of games that openly invite these sorts of conversations. But even in games that don't seem to beg for political discourse, a discussion about the game's politics can still be had. There's certainly something to be said about the assumptions, say, civilization builds into its simulations. Look at its win states and what they value, 
technological progress, military conquest, economic superiority, and cultural domination. You don't win by eliminating hunger, or poverty, or by nuclear deproliferation, or by having a particularly high standard of living. You get it for, for lack of a better way to phrase this, very American goals. Winning the space race? Becoming a recognized world leader at the UN? Having a giant shiny army that can easily crush other civs? Cultural domination by so-called great works that get exported to the world? Civilization values what the culture that created it values, and while the game doesn't set out to be a political statement, the way it systemized the world certainly presents one. Or we can look at the recent release of SimCity. It clearly values dense urban cities over all other types of cities. Not only do the game's city size limitations and overall goals reinforce this, but the developers have said as much. It's less interested in exploring cities of all kinds than it is in asking you to grind your way up to the sort of city it idealizes, a tightly packed skyscraper-filled metropolis. In its view, sprawling suburbia is just lazily wasted space, and an agrarian or rural city literally doesn't exist. And I mean, I can keep going. Remember the debate everyone had about Spore and whether it presented a case for creationism or evolution? Or how The Sims defines modern life as a game of conspicuous consumption? Or how Eve Online is sort of a libertarian dystopia? My point is that while the outward intent of these games isn't necessarily to be political, you can definitely see how the viewpoint and values of the developers makes their way into these games, right? How we can have a political conversation about the implication of a game's systems and metaphors, and how they reinforce or challenge different political ideas? That by having these conversations, we're not bringing politics into the game, but rather discussing the already extant politics of the game? Well, even if you can't agree to that, it doesn't really matter. Because it turns out that insisting games generally don't take a political stance is itself a political stance. It's an argument that the apolitical is anything that doesn't openly advocate anything in particular. Gamers think politics is invading discussion of games because they don't see anything political about the way games are. They're comfortable with games that are currently being made and the messages games are currently sending out about culture and society. Subsequently, they don't see them as politically charged works, but rather works that reflect their perceived reality. You know, Grand Theft Auto V isn't misogynistic and transphobic, it's just presenting the world as it really is, you know? Going to be the She was screaming no, and he just kept hitting her. It's just over here. We got one. Go, go, get in there. You fucking move and you're dead. When oh I say God. you suck, I mean you really suck. Civilization isn't a game about cultural, financial, and military imperialism. It's just telling the story of man throughout time as it's always been. Bioshock Infinite doesn't recklessly invoke racially charged imagery and a lazy shorthand for evil without justifying itself. It's just referencing, like, an actual period in history where people thought that and stuff. Are you gonna throw it? Or are you taking your coffee black these days? <laughs> but reframing a game's politics as just the way the world works is at best a poor apologia for a game's political views, and definitely not a meaningful refutation that those ideas are in the text. Politics isn't some alien subject coming in and invading our precious games and games writing with its harmful presence. It's already here. Hell, it's been here. From the abhorrent racism of Custer's Revenge to the Western jingoism of Call of Duty. From the anti-nuclear stance of Chris Crawford's Balance of Power to the anti-nuclear stance of DEF CON. From the city planning assumptions built into SimCity to the city planning assumptions built into SimCity. Games are and have been political, carrying messages about the worldview of their developers whether they intended them or not. Does that mean that every conversation about games has to be political? No, of course not. There are plenty of engaging discussions to be had about story structure, emotional impact, mechanic and system design, and tons of other stuff. But when someone tries to bring up a game's politics, whether it's in a review, a criticism, or simply a forum post or Twitter comment, the response shouldn't be a childish meltdown about how games aren't political and to stop taking things so seriously. To do so is to insist that games don't have the capacity to be political. Gamers can't have it both ways. Either games are expressive and they need to be responsible for what they express, or they're just games and have no cultural consequence. You know which way I lean in that debate. What about you?